All right, hey everybody, welcome to Zenfolio Live. I'm Robert with Zenfolio Customer Support. And I wanna say thank you to everybody who's hanging out with me today on the live Q&A. Uh, I've already got a bunch of you guys in chat, so let me just say hi. Uh, Shiva says, hey, how can I start creating my website? Uh, hey, thanks for coming and hang hanging out with us today, Shiva. I'll be glad to help you uh, creating your website, linking to your website and things like that here in just a second. Uh, Roxanne, hello from uh, Halton Hills, Ontario. Roxanne, it's always good to have you here hanging out with us. Greg says, happy Friday Eve. Yes, my favorite day of the week because I know I got one more day to go and I get to relax on the weekend sometimes. Not always, but sometimes. Plus, I get to hang out with you guys today, so that makes my uh, day as well. Um, okay, so what we're going we're to be talking about today is we're going to be talking about um, using your homepage grid to, as a portfolio preview. So your homepage is going to be the first thing that people see when they come to your website. How can we use that effectively? How can we use a grid to kind of preview your homepage? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Now, before I jump into the subject today, I want to tell you guys what's coming up. So next week, we're going to talk about getting clients to your online gallery. So we're going to go over a few different ways that you can get your clients to their online galleries using like client access, gallery invites and things like that. And then later on in the month, I've got something super special for you guys. We're gonna do a product review on our um, Easy Album service. We're actually gonna have somebody on here come and review the product and uh, show you what the albums look like and things like that. So we have, we're gonna have a special guest come on and do a product review. So I hope you guys are excited about that. All right, um, let's see. Home phone says aloha, aloha home phone. I wish I could be just like permanently hanging out in Hawaii. That would be pretty sweet. Uh, Don Freely from Raleigh, North Carolina. Hey, Don, I'm actually not too far from you. Today I'm broadcasting in Smithfield. Sometimes I, I, I broadcast from Raleigh. It just depends on what's going on during the week, but definitely here in North Carolina. Uh, Mark says, going to be at Photo Plus NYC? Question mark. Hey, Mark, I'm not sure if we are or not. I can definitely find out and let you know. Um, let me find out what trade shows we are going to be at, and I will make sure to let you guys know next week. I don't have that list in front of me right now, but I will definitely make sure to let you guys know. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into the topic today, which is all about setting up your homepage with a grid so that you can use it as a portfolio preview. So let me get my screen switched over here. All right, so what we're going to do is let's just go ahead and start uh, in Customize View. So those of you guys that aren't familiar with Customize View, you can get there a couple of different ways. From your dashboard, you can just click on Customize Website right here. Or anywhere else in your account, you can actually just hover over My Zenfolio up in the top right here and click on Customize Website. That's going to take you into Customize View where you can customize your homepage, you can set up your site menu, and you can do different things like that. Um, so right now you can see this homepage. I don't really have a grid showing. What I want to do is I want to go from using this full screen slideshow on my homepage to when somebody lands on my, uh, my homepage, then um, what happens is they see a grid that displays um, my different portfolios and there's a nice little way for them to just click on it and view my portfolios. So the first thing we have to do is we've got to switch over to using a grid style homepage. So the easiest way to do that is to actually use the um, the layout up here. You can use the layout. It's going to change your home page over, uh, and it's not going to affect the theme and stuff like that. It's just going to change your home page. So if we click on layout right here, there are a couple of different grid options up here that you can choose from. Now, what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to actually use a site preset to switch this over. So what I'm going to do is come down here to site preset, and we've got 14 different presets that you guys can use. And some of them are grid style presets. Now, some of the grid styles works better than other work better than others, but you can always change them. So for instance, depending on what style you're looking for, we've got the Knox preset, 
which is going to give you kind of a Pinterest style grid. Um, it's going to be like a collage style grid. But then there are, like, like I said, there are several other presets here that all have grid styles that you can use. And the cool thing about it is you can customize the grid style as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go with, uh, let's see. I'm going to go with uh, this one right here. I'm just going to go ahead and click apply, hit continue. Now guys, keep in mind when you're using these presets like I'm using now, it's going to change the look of your entire website. So this theme that you're seeing now is not just going to apply on the home page. It's also going to apply this theme to the rest of your galleries, your built in pages and things like that. So if you don't want to change anything but your home page, just use the layout option up here and don't use the site preset. OK, so now that we've got a preset here using a grid style, what we need to do is we need to select the content that we want to show on this grid. Now, you can just click the select gallery button right here. Go up here and choose any gallery that you want. So if you want to show a portfolio gallery here on here, you can. You hit select. And then there's an option right here, what happens when people click the thumbnails. So you've got dim the lights, you've got go to URL, open photo page, or do nothing. Um, so I'm going to select open photo page, and we're just going to go down here to the bottom, and we're going to apply that. So now what you're going to see is the home page is now going to turn into a grid that's displaying the images from the gallery that I just selected in this collage style grid here. And this is completely customizable. You can change the size and stuff like that. But this is not doing what I want it to do. Basically, it's just showing that gallery. What I want is I want my uh, home page to actually give a preview of my portfolio. So what I'm going to do instead of linking to a gallery is I'm going to go back up to grid content. And instead of selecting a gallery, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this entire portfolio group. Now what that's going to do is that's going to display the cover photo for each gallery inside of here. And then when somebody clicks on it, it's going to take them to that gallery. So we're kind of putting a portfolio preview on our home page. So now I'm just going to click apply right here and we're going to take a look and see what this looks like. This is going to look a little different than what most people are used to. I've got these custom uh, thumbnail images that I've made and I'll show you guys where that's at in a minute and how I did this. But this isn't really giving me much of a grid style. So what we need to do is we need to play around with the options of this grid. So we're going to click on grid content again. And this time we're going to play around with the grid options and make this a little bit smaller, make it work a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the minimum row height to be 200. And then you know what, let's put some spacing around this grid. So I'm just going to put uh, some spacing around this grid right here. So all I'm doing is adding in uh, a pixel dimension on the margins around the grid because I want to squeeze those towards the middle a little bit and add some space around the outside. So now you're going to notice right away after I hit apply, the grid page is going to look completely different. It's going to compress those in a little bit. And now we have a nice preview of my portfolio here. And if somebody clicks on this, they're going to be taken right to my portraits uh, portfolio gallery. And they can scroll through and see that. If you go back to the home page, same thing here. If we click on one of the other categories, it's going to take the, the visitor to the uh, portfolio for that specific gallery. And there's a lot you can do with this. I'm just using some really basic thumbnails that I created in Photoshop to get this effect. So I'm going back to the home page again one more time. And so you can see what it's showing is it's just showing these cover thumbnails and then linking to the galleries. And so anytime I add a new gallery into that um, group, it will show up here on my home page as well. So what I'm going to do is let me just go back to the dashboard really quick and show you guys that group and what it looks like on the back end. And then also show you how I set up those custom thumbnails that you're seeing. So we're going to click on photos right here. And then I'm just what I've done is I've linked to this group right here. And inside of it are these four different galleries right here. And if you click on it, 
Usually by default, when you create a gallery, the first image in the gallery is going to become the gallery thumbnail. However, as you can see, I've got a custom one that I've set up here. Now this wasn't too hard to do. All you have to do is make a gallery for your custom thumbnails, which I did that right here. And then I think it's in this actually right here. Let me see. Now I can't remember where I put the gallery. Let's see if it's down here. Here it is. So I made this cover photos gallery. I uploaded these images to it. And then all you do is click on the image, click this little drop down arrow, put select as cover thumbnail, and then you can just go and choose the uh, gallery that you want that to be the cover photo for. So this is the engagement gallery here. I click assign. And then now, rather than the first image in this gallery being the cover photo, that custom cover photo that I created is now the cover photo. And then it's going to be used on that actual homepage grid. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for using your homepage grid as a portfolio preview. If you guys have any questions about the process, anything you want me to go back through, throw that out in the chat. And I'll be happy to go back through and do that for you guys and show you that. Let me hop back to my dashboard really quick and see what's going on in the chat here. All right, uh, Roxanne says, show us what's on your shirt, please. So this is a uh, Photographer Central shirt. Right there, yep, it's a Photographer Central shirt. So uh, Baton Photography's guess was correct. You win the golden cookie. Uh, hey, Graham says, hello. Hey, Graham, always glad to have you hanging out here with us. Kayla's hanging out with us today and moderating in the chat. So if you guys have some questions, uh, Kayla can definitely help you with those questions. Uh, and uh, also, like I said, we're going to try to answer any questions you guys have live here uh, today. So let me go back up. I know I had a couple of questions at the first. Uh, so Shiva says, how can I start creating my website? And then she said, how can I link my entire website? So I'm not exactly 100% sure what you're asking, so I'm going to try to answer. If I'm off, Shiva, just definitely let me know. Please feel free to um, explain more in the chat and clarify what I'm going to talk about. But um, as far as creating your website, my personal place that I tell people to usually start is with our site presets that I was just using a second ago. So if you're just into your website and you want to start working on it, creating it, doing some customization and things like that, the best place to start is with a site preset. So if I go to customize website right here, what we can do is we'll just select a site preset. It's going to give us a completely new website design and you can play around with this. You don't have to be stuck with the first one that you select. You can play around with this uh, and try all of them out. In fact, I recommend trying out a bunch of these different presets. So you just click on site preset right here. We've got 12 of them here. You can just scroll through, kind of find one that you like that might get you somewhere close to what you want to look, what, the way you want your uh, paint website to look. So let's say maybe we like this Knox one right here. Let's go ahead and apply that and we'll hit continue. And uh, we'll see what this looks like. And then from here, you can play around with the theme. You can change the layout. You can change the gallery. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply a gallery here really quick. Uh, let's go to, I think I have a uh, right here. Here we go. We're going to apply that one. So we have some content so we can see what this looks like with um, some content on there. Now let's say maybe we like this, but the thumbnails are a little big. Go up to grid content. Uh, we can change these down, make them a little bit smaller, maybe make them like 175. Okay, looking a little bit better. Maybe we're not a huge fan of the white color. We can go up here to themes and change the theme right here to all. There's all kinds of built-in themes. So if you want to go with something a little bit darker, you could go with maybe, uh, let's see, let me find one here. Something like this. Change that theme up. It's all about finding a good place to start with something that you're close to liking and then just changing the options, trying out different things and stuff like that. Um, you know, if you don't like this, if you don't like the grid at all, you can definitely uh, just switch back to another site preset here, try a different one out. Maybe you want to try a full screen. You could try that one out as well. So it's really just getting in there and playing around in customized view 
getting things to look the way that you want and stuff like that. Now, we do have a service where uh, a Zenfolio expert will help you with your website, help you set it up and design it. And if I can get Kayla to throw her link out in the chat, it's actually the amazing Kayla that helps you with that, uh, your site design and stuff like that. So you could definitely check out that and uh, try that out as well if you're having trouble designing your site. All right, um, as far as linking to your website goes, that really depends on what you've got set up. So let me get back to my dashboard here really quick. If you're just trying to give somebody the link to your website and you're not sure what that link is, you can hover over my website right here, click view website, and then let me open this in a uh, new incognito window here so I can drag it down and show you guys this. So then your website link would be right up here. It's blackonyx.zenfolio.com. All right, anyway, Shiva, I hope that kind of some landed somewhere in the ballpark of what you're asking. If I missed it or if you need me to go deeper or provide more clarification, definitely put that in the chat and I will get that answered for you. All right, let me hop back here in the chat. All right, uh, so let's see. Um, I know I missed one. When approving orders, can I add a discount code or discount at that time. So Greg, that's going to depend on what account level that you have. Um, if you have a premium business account or an advanced account, you can actually add discounts and discount codes uh, to orders before you approve them. If you've got the older legacy plan like the premium or if you've got a pro account, unfortunately those options are not going to be available to you. Now let me show you what it looks like, Greg. So. I'm going to go right here to these pending orders. And what you can do is if you've got an order that's pending, you can actually add a discount to it. Like I said, if you have the advanced account or the premium business account, and I'll show you where to find out what account level you have in just a second. But here's the order right here before it's been approved. You can click the give discount button right here, and you can either choose a coupon that you have created, which you can see there's about a million coupons in this account. Or you can set the discount manually. You can di manually discount $50, manually discount the shipping. And then when you click that, what's going to happen is it's actually going to refund the client. Because even though this order is still waiting for approval, the client has already been charged for this order. So it's going to refund the client and it's going to send them an email and let them know that they've been refunded uh, and... Um, it'll and it'll it'll process that refund and then usually it takes I think about two to ten business days depending on their uh, bank for that refund to actually post to their account. So that's if you have the uh, advanced account or if you have the premium business account. Now if you're not sure what account level you have, you can go to settings and then click on account information and it'll tell you right here account level and it will tell you what level your account is right here. Obviously this is a special account because it's a demo account. You should either be seeing something like premium, premium business, pro, uh, advanced, starter, something like that. Uh, so again, the only accounts that can provide discounts on a, orders is gonna be a premium business or an advanced account. And if that's something you're interested in doing, you should definitely consider doing the upgrade to that advanced account. You're going to get phone support as well, and then some other cool features like access to Miller's products and things like that. All right, let me jump back to my dashboard. Let's see here. Roxanne says, I still need help with the Lightroom plugin. I have not been able to install it. Unfortunately, Roxanne, when it comes to the Lightroom plugin, that is a third party plugin. And uh, we are not really able to provide any technical support or help with that. We will do the best that we can, but since we did not develop it, we are very limited on the, as far as the resources that we do have. Um, we will definitely try to help out. I see Kayla threw that. Um, did she throw a link out there? Oh, okay. She threw a design link. But yeah, Roxanne, unfortunately, um, like I said, it is a third-party plugin, and we don't have a lot of resources to actually troubleshoot and help you with that. But you should be able to reach out to the developer, and they should be able to help you with, with that. If you go to um, Toolkit down here, let me just open this up in a new tab. So if you go to Toolkit and you go to, I think it's Upload Tools. Let's see, Uploading Tools right here. And then whichever plugin that you downloaded, there should be a link to their website right here. So view website right here if it's the Jeffrey Friedel one. Um, if it's this one, there's a view website right here. They should have a way to reach out and contact them and offer support that way. 
All right, let me get back to my dashboard and let me grab some email questions really quick. Uh, so let me see here. All right, so uh, the first question I've got says, I have uploaded some music that I bought from iTunes to use as a soundtrack, but now it's not working. Why? So there's a couple of different reasons this could be happening. One of the biggest reasons is that when you buy music from iTunes, most of the time it's not going to come commercially licensed. So uh, you're buying it for personal use, but when you upload it to your Zenfolio account and try to use it as a slideshow, that's actually more of a commercial use for it. And so iTunes has a way to catch that stuff, and um, they, that could be the reason why it's not working. You need to think of it as, you know, musicians are artists too, just like photographers are. And we wouldn't want people coming to our website and screenshotting our photos and um, screenshotting our photos and using them for commercial purposes and things like that. That's why we use digital licenses. Same thing was with musicians. Um, when you buy their music from iTunes, you're buying it for personal use and not for commercial use. Um, and so that's something to definitely keep in mind. The other thing is, if it's, if you're uploading it, you need to check the format. I would definitely recommend making sure that you're uploading in MP3 format if you can. Um, okay, let's see. So the next question I got here from the email says, uh, what is the difference between MPEX and MPEX Pro? I think Greg asked this question on the link for questions for next week and I think I actually missed it so if I missed it I apologize um, if you guys aren't sure what they're talking about if you go into your account and you go to selling whenever you're setting up a price list you're gonna see some different vendors that we have integrated into our service two of those are gonna be MPIX and MPIX Pro so let me just show you really quick actually you can see them right here you can go to selling products from integrated vendors and it's going to show you MPIX and MPIX Pro. Now the difference between the two is that MPIX is consumer based. So anybody can go to MPIX.com. You can see the pricing even if you're not a professional photographer. You can go see the pricing. You can see the products and things like that. It's consumer based. It's geared for you know just the everyday consumer. That's why, that's what the difference is. Now, MPIX Pro is geared towards professional photographers. So the um, base lab cost is going to be a little bit cheaper to let you add on a markup. Also, just anybody online can't go to MPIX Pro and create an account, an account and see their pricing. Um, it's not like MPIX where people can just go and order products from them directly. MPIX Pro is geared towards professional photographers and they also are going to have a much wider range of products to offer. That's the difference between the two companies. I know it's a little confusing, but the best way to think about it is that MPIX is consumer based and then MPIX Pro is geared towards professional photographers. That's the way to kind of keep it separated in your head. All right, uh, let's see. Another question I got here says, um, Bad Photography says, how are you preparing the gallery grid wording using Photoshop with some customization? Yeah, so when I was doing that, I can't really pull Photoshop up right now, but what I did was actually, I created those cover photos for something else um, and I just repurposed them. But yeah, I was just pulling them up in Photoshop and putting whatever wording I wanted over the top. Now, as far as sizing goes, what I did was I made them 200 by 300 pixels. And the reason that I did that was because if I go to customize website right here, and depending on the grid style you pick, you can select your size. But if you use, let me get a grid going here. If we use this grid right here, This specific grid size right here, or this specific grid I'm going to use, will let you put in the the uh, the dimensions of the photo. So if I go to select right here, and I go to portfolio, if I use grid style C, even though it shows a square grid right here, you can actually determine the thumbnail's width and height right here. So you don't have to use square grids. So if that's something you're looking at doing, I would definitely consider going with grid C. Because like I said, it will let you create whatever thumbnail size you want. You just have to keep in mind that those dimensions 
need to be less than 400 pixels and larger than 60. So for the thumbnail width, 300, thumbnail height, 200. And so now if I click down here and hit apply, all of those will fit perfectly in that size. It should be just like a nice little square grid here in the center. Well, that's not right. Let's do that again. Let's add some uh, buffering around the edges here. So let's just add some uh, margin really, really quick. But anyway, that's what I did was I created on the Photoshop at 300 by 200 because I knew I could set up the size on grid C and I wanted them to fit specifically right here in the center like this uh, is what I wanted. So that's why I used that grid. And I just opened them up in Photoshop, put that text layer over it, and then exported it as a transparent PNG. All right, let me get back to the dashboard there. That's a great question, though. Hopefully that answers the question. Um, hopefully that answers the question there. Let's see. Oh, Batan Photography says, is there a service available once the initial development has been done that can make um, recommendations? So I'm sorry, I completely misread the question. I read the wrong question. I apologize. So um, I hope I'm saying your name right. Batten Photography. Um, I don't know if there's really a service, but um, what you can do is you can definitely reach out to the support team. You can definitely talk to Kayla on her project. And there's also um, some, I think there's some Facebook groups that are specifically Zenfolio users. Definitely do a search like for that stuff. Join one of those groups because you guys can definitely help each other out, uh, communicating, sharing your website, giving each other pointers and things like that. And then if nothing nothing else, there's also um, there is also a um, uh, our user voice not our user voice form, but Zenfolio also has forums that you can access as well. You guys can share your websites in there and ask for recommendations and critiques and things like that. And you can find that in your account if you just go down to the bottom down here and go to the forums right here this is where you can find that I think there's even a, a post there a place there for website sharing and critiquing I'm not sure where right here show and tell so right here is the show and tell um, there's all kinds of different topics in here that you guys can talk about and go in and and talk about and discuss and help each other out so anyway, I hope that answers your question. Sorry about the confusion there. I read the completely wrong question, but I hope I answered two questions with one uh, response there. Um, all right, Greg says, is there any way to um, any way to put my logo into my communication email that I send out to clients? Currently, Greg, there's not a way to put logos and, and images into uh, your emails that you send out to your clients as far as like from uh, gallery invites or communications and things like that. I think that's something that we are looking at. I'm not sure of any timeline when that's going to be implemented. Definitely would be nice to have. Um, something that I usually do for that kind of thing is I usually use an outside service like MailChimp or something like that. Um, so that's usually what I do is use uh, an outside service like MailChimp if I want to make it my emails really visual and things like that. All right, uh, let's see. Let me get back to the chat here. Also, you guys that are watching too, just to let you know, as soon as the live stream finishes, it takes a little bit of processing time, but it does get put on our YouTube channel where you can come back. You can access all of this information and read it and, and uh, listen to it later, fast forward and rewind. Uh, there should be actually a link, I think, in this video right now below that will give you a link to the past live streams. And that's where it will show up. But if you can't find it, what you can do is just go to our YouTube channel. And somewhere on the main page there is a place that says past live streams that you can click and access and watch those past live streams. Uh, for those of you guys who are watching the recorded version of this later on down the road, if you guys have any questions that you'd like for me to answer next week, make sure to leave them as comments in the video. Um, so just click right on the, that comment button, leave me a comment, ask a question, and I will use those to take as questions for the following week. Those of you guys who are watching the live stream right now, if you guys are enjoying this, if this is helpful for you guys, make sure to give it a thumbs up and feel free to leave comments as well on the video. And also, if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, click that little orange Zenfolio icon that's somewhere down in here. Make sure to click subscribe. We do new video tutorials every week and then a live stream each week as well. 
Um, I just finished up the creating a portfolio on Zenfolio tutorial playlist. So it's a whole series. Uh, actually, it's four videos, a four part series of videos all about creating your portfolio from choosing the images to creating a gallery to customizing the gallery to uh, creating your portfolio group just like I had earlier and then finally linking to your portfolio from your website showing you a couple of different ways that you can do that so if you haven't checked out that yet it's on the channel now under our playlist it's called creating a portfolio with Zimfolio and then I think it's going to be posted on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all that good stuff tomorrow sometime as well all right, uh, let's see. I know I'm going to say this name wrong. I'm going to try to pronounce it right. Um, Leoi, Leohoji, I'm going to try. Anyway, they say, has there been any improvements to the Creative Photo Book interface? I have had customers get so frustrated they just abandon it. I completely understand. Um, that's something that we're looking at. In the meantime, there has been a huge improvement that's not only going to be easier for your clients, a lot easier for you. It's called the Zenfolio Easy Album Service. Now, what this does is basically you just turn it on. Your clients go in and they decide, hey, I want to purchase an album. They basically click a button that says make an album. And we actually have designers that handpick the photos. They will contact your client, show your client the photos that they picked. They'll work back and forth with the client to make sure the client's happy with that. And then after that, they actually design the album for your client. Let your client see the album design. Give them three, I think it's three revisions, and then they'll create the book for them and send it to your client. That's actually the product that we're going to be reviewing, not next week, but the week after. I'm going to have a, a special guest on here to review the product. But if that's something that you're interested in and making it easier for you and your clients, you can turn this on. You just need to go to selling and then click on photo albums right here and then just enable the photo album service for your clients. And that will put those buttons in your galleries there where your clients can use that service, save them some headache and time and then save you some headache and time as well. And if you want to order a demo, you can come down here to the bottom and there's actually a coupon here that will give you, the photographer, half off of a studio sample if you want to see what those albums look like on hand. Also, like I said, not next week, but the following week, we're going to have those albums here and do a product review on those as well. All right, let me uh, jump over and grab an email question really quick. Uh, so let's see. Um, so I've got a question here. It was from uh, last week as well. It says it's from Don. Don says, can you advise where we get the emails after and the best practices for collecting them? So I think what Don is asking about is there's an option that you can turn in on your account. And if you haven't played with this option yet, you should definitely check it out. It's going to help you build your marketing email list. So let me show you what we're talking about. And then Don, I'll answer your question after that. All right. So if you go to photos right here. There's a little uh, feature called visitor sign-in. So let's say, uh, let me just go to a client's gallery really quick here. Let's go to the Smith Gallery right here. Let's say this is a wedding gallery, and I know that the bride and groom is going to be sending this uh, gallery out to all their friends and family. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to capture those people's email so I can get back in touch with them and try to get some business from them. There's a feature called visitor sign in that you can turn on. And if you scroll down here to the bottom, it's right here. You can click visitor sign in and you can see this one is turned on. But let me just show you here. You want to select display a visitor sign in on the page before people access the images. Basically, what's going to happen is they're going to see a little screen. It's kind of like a password screen, but not really. It's going to say, please register before they view the photos. Or if you want to change that text, you can change it to say something else. And then there are these sign-in fields. So if you click right here, these can be required or optional. You can require their name, their email address, their phone number. You can even add your own additional question here if you want. And then once you're finished, click Save. Now, anytime somebody goes to that gallery, let me just show you really quick how it works. Anytime somebody goes to this gallery, they're going to see a page that asks them to sign in. You're going to see a page that looks just like this to ask them to sign in. So I'll put Robert and I will put 
uh, zenvisitor at gmail.com. And now I can sign in. So now what happens is that email actually goes into a communications list in your Zenfolio account. So once this logs in here, we'll go back to my uh, admin screen and that we'll actually be able to see where that email uh, is captured at and what you, some things you can do with those captured emails. So my internet is being a little bit of a pain. Let me see if I can get that going. There we go. Okay, so now that I'm in the gallery, let me just close this out. And then what we're going to do is just go to communications right here. And what we're going to do is now we can sort by the gallery. So let's say it's been after that wedding and we want to see everybody who signed in because we want to send them a marketing email of some kind. You can go right here and you can say, let's only see the people who signed into this gallery right here. So I can now apply that. Now anybody who had went through that visitor sign in process, their email address would be right here. I could click send email and I could send them some kind of marketing email like, hey, thanks for visiting the gallery. Uh, if, if you have a wedding or event coming up that you'd like photographed, I'd love to sit down and talk to you. Uh, here's my phone number. Let's grab some coffee sometime or something like that. So that's how you can use that there. Uh, let me get back to my dashboard really quick. And let's see, Greg says, for the Zenfolio marketing campaigns, when you send out emails on my behalf, will those come from my email address? And is there a remove me option on those emails? So yes, those will come from the email address that you have in your account. I think it's the reply to email. So if I go to settings, and uh, let's see, where is that at? Is it website? Somewhere over here, there is a section called reply to email or something like that. I just got to find it. Well, I'm not, don't remember where it's at. Let me see. Display contact, personal information, email and password. Is it here? I think it's the email address that you have in here is what it will use. But it will come from your email address there. Um, and then what it will do, it will it should have an opt-out option at the very bottom of it. Um, at the very bottom of the email, there should be an unsubscribe link at the bottom of that marketing email that we send out. Um, Tracy says, do only customers who have created an account get the holiday uh, sales or is everyone in my contact list? So when it comes to those built-in Zenfolio uh, free client marketing sales, the way it works is it goes out to people who have created an account. Uh, I think it's in the last, maybe, I think it's the last, either last six months or last nine months. I can't remember exactly. I know there's a video tutorial on it that will tell you in detail who all it goes to. If I could get Kayla to throw that out in the chat. I think it goes to people who have created an account, saved a set of favorites, or made a purchase, but I just can't remember if it's the last six months or the last nine months. Um, but there is a video tutorial that does explain that, does explain who it goes to, also explains how to keep people from getting the emails that you don't want them, if you don't want them to get the emails. Uh, if I can get Kayla to throw that link out in the chat, uh, it's a good video tutorial on that. Um, let's see, Ted says, how can I find a folder or images after I tag it? Do I have to wait 24 hours or is it instant using the search on the right hand top of the screen? So, uh, Ted, as far as when you're tagging it, it should be pretty instant. That's going to be something we'd have to look into of how you're doing it. The, and a couple of factors really depend on it there. So if you go in here, let's see, um, let's go right here. If I go to this client gallery right here, first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that it's actually searchable. So if we go to gallery access, um, there is a setting, it's called search and metadata right here. And we need to make sure that it's at least allowed to be searched on your site. So you want to make sure that that's checked. And then next you're going to hit save. Now we know that that content is publicly searchable. Now, as far as the images, we want to make sure that those are the same, making sure that they're following the gallery rules. So I click that select all button right here. We just want to make sure that when we go up to photo access, it says same as gallery. 
That way we know that those photos are following the gallery rules and it's going to let them be searched and found and things like that. So now what we can do is, let me just go here and I will go to photo details and let's say I want to be able to find this if I search for Ted. I can also add in the keywords here and we're going to click save and so since that's publicly searchable we should now be able to find this in that search so if I go to uh, website built-in pages that search page should be there let me find it here here's that search page let me just open this in a new tab but basically this is going to be the same page that you see when you're using that other search here so now if I say Ted Well, it didn't find that. It might take a few minutes, but it should be pretty close to being instantly searched. Let me look here. I also need to make sure that the um, group and galleries that they're in are not uh, any kind of not any kind of weird settings where they can't be searchable and things like that. So if I go to the group right here, click group access, I want to make sure that that's allowing searching as well. So let's see. Search and metadata. Yep, that's allowing searching. Let me just go here, make sure that this one is, because I know I had one of those turned off at one time. That one is allowed to be searchable. All right, let's see. And then for the top level group up here, I think, all photographs. So I need to make sure that that one is allowed to be searchable as well. So group access group access right here search and metadata right here and that one is allowed to be searchable let's just let that be well let's leave that there like that okay so we go to dashboard and actually I think I gave you some wrong information Ted uh, now that I think about it I remember talking to uh, an engineer about this before and it's actually a job that the system has to do to apply that information and make it searchable so what it's actually going to do is it's going to take about 15 to 20 minutes um, before it can actually be searched so you kind of have to just give it some wait time we'll come back and check that out I, I rem remember talking to somebody about that before and it actually takes it does take about 15 to 20 minutes for that search to actually work so we can come back to that before we hop off here today and see if that search works um, okay Tracy says uh, okay, thank you. Thank you, Kayla. Perfect. All right, glad that answered your questions. Let me go ahead and uh, grab some email questions really quick. Um, so let's see. The next question I have here says, is there a limit on the number of price lists I can have? Um, actually, there's not a limit on the number of price lists you have, but you do want to be careful that you don't get yourself confused and you don't have a bunch of price lists that are not well organized, that are not well named, so that when you're going through and adding price lists on galleries, that you don't accidentally add the wrong one and charge people too little or charge people too much. So, you know, the one of the things is you want to make sure that when you're creating your price list, you want to make sure that you're doing a good job of naming those price lists so that you know what they're for. So you can see I've got a bunch in here, and some of these I did a terrible job collection test. I have no idea why I made that, uh, so I should just come and delete that. But some of these up here you can see I've given them very specific names because I've actually made them for very specific reasons. For instance, this 3-2 metals only, that only has products in it that are metal prints that are in the 3-2 aspect ratio. You can also see I've got some that are named for specific client groups. So if you're going to create a price list for your uh, engagement clients or your senior clients or your portrait clients, you just want to make sure that you're giving it a name so that you, when you look in here, you see it, you know exactly what it's for, and you don't accidentally confuse it with something else. Uh, sometimes people will duplicate a price list uh, and, uh, and make it a little bit cheaper for certain galleries. If you're going to do that, again, you just want to make sure that you know you put something in that name so that you know why you created it. I personally like to recommend to try to stay minimal if you can with your price list. If you can work off of one price list, which I know is basically impossible, but if you can work off of one price list, you can assign it to your all photographs. And then anytime you upload a new gallery, it automatically takes that price list on. If you're going to create a bunch of different price lists, chances are you're probably going to end up manually assigning a bunch of those price lists 
uh, to your groups and galleries and things like that. So like I said, no limit. Just make sure that you're organizing and simple is best if you can keep it simple and keep that count down to just a handful and they're well named. All right, uh, let's see. Ted says, why wouldn't search be accessed by default? Um, usually it is. I've, I, I think it is actually, but um, I've changed so much in this account that I have to go back and double check things. Like I said, Ted, I've changed so much stuff in this account, turned things off, turned them on, that whenever I do anything in this account that should be default, because of all the changes that I've constantly making on this, I uh, and stuff that I don't even remember I changed, I'm constantly having to go back. Usually when you create a gallery, it is on by default. The one thing that you do have to watch though, Ted, is if you create a gallery, like if I were to turn the search off on this engagement group for some reason, I didn't want it to be searchable. If I were to turn this off right here and hit save, now that that's turned off, any new gallery that I create in here or any gallery that's set to follow its settings will also turn off the search. So this one right here doesn't say same as containing gallery. So that search should be on. It is right there. But if I came up here and selected this option, you can see immediately it switched to that turning it off because it's following the group settings. So that's the one thing you do have to be careful about switching those up. All right, uh, so Greg says, on your 3-2 price list, do you have that set to fit or center? So what I do, Greg, is when I'm creating those price lists with only 3-2 aspect ratio pro um, products, I set them to fit. Center should probably work too as long as the images that you're uploading our 3 to aspect ratio center should center should work too but usually what I do is I set them to fit um, let's just go there and, and uh, I'll show you really quick so if I go to price list and then I go to that 3 to metal aspect ratio one as soon as this my internet stops playing games with me let's go there but that's how I prefer building my price list Greg I like to take the confusion out of things so when personally whenever I personally build a price list I know that all of my images coming out of my camera are going to be in that 3-2 aspect ratio if I have to do any cropping for any reason I do my very best to maintain that 3-2 aspect ratio because all of my price list I build around that that way there's never any weird cropping issues and everything just fits on the photos and I don't have to worry about clients emailing me saying hey I'm looking at the cropping section I'm just not sure if, if this is going to print right because this orange line is here or something like that um, I usually set this up to fit let's take a check and see how I have it here so this one here I let it leave to the customers but if I was actually setting this up for myself I would set that to fit that way the photos just fit the products like they're supposed to and cropping is not an issue at all. All right, let me get to dashboard here. And let's see. Let me uh, grab an email question really quick, Ted, and then I will come back to you really quick. I got to make sure I get these questions answered that I keep missing for some reason. All right, Greg says, what exactly are breadcrumbs? So I think Greg asked this on the last stream and I think I might've missed this one as well. So I do apologize, Greg, if, if this was you that asked this and I missed it. So breadcrumbs are the path to your gallery. So in a sense, let me show you what breadcrumbs are showing and then I'll show you what they look like and how to turn them off. So what if I was if I was in this uh, Carter gallery right here, if I was on this on visitor view side and breadcrumbs were showing what it would look like is it would look like the gallery name, then it would show engagements, then it would show clients, and then it would show all photographs because this is um, this is the path to the gallery and that's what breadcrumbs are. If you remember the old fairy tale Hansel and Gretel where he left the trail of breadcrumbs to find his way back, that's exactly what they are. It's the path to wherever you are and how to get back. So if I go into this gallery really quick and I turn the breadcrumbs on, you can actually see the link to the gallery and how to get back to other galleries and things like that. 
So first thing I'm going to do is go to site settings right here and I will go to this general and set display top level so we can see that one and then I'm going to go and make sure that the path to the gallery is set to show as well. So now if I go options, page elements, uncheck use default, right here path to gallery set it to show and I apply that now you're going to see up in the top left hand corner, you're going to see my breadcrumbs. This is how to get back to all the containing groups or galleries. Basically how to get back to the top level group, which is all photographs. Now, a reason that you want to turn this off is because if a visitor sees this, depending on how you have your access control set up, they could be accessing other clients' galleries that they shouldn't be accessing, especially with the all photographs showing. They could go in and, you know, potentially see all the other folders in your account and things like that. Again, that depends on the access control settings, but if they can click that, they could go in and start looking at other things in your account. So that's why I really recommend turning those off. Um, so I recommend going up to Options, setting that path to gallery to hide then we'll apply that and then the really big important one e even if you leave that path to gallery to show there personally the most important one I think is going to that site settings right here and making sure that that all photographs group is set to hide and breadcrumbs because really the last thing that you want anybody to be able to access is the very top level group of all of your photos so I personally recommend keeping those set to hide, but that's what the breadcrumbs are and that's why they're there for is to get basically like a back button or a trail. All right, let me get back to my dashboard really quick. All right, uh, let me grab a sip of water here. <clears throat> okay, um, so let's see. Ted says we were talking offline last week. Our Google folders available on moments or mobile um i don't think so uh ted i'm not sure exactly what you mean by uh google folders um i know on the uh the photo moments and on the um on the zenfolio app you can access your uh these right here you can access your groups and you can send clients groups through the photo moments app but uh, as far as Google folders, I don't think there's any kind of integration for those that I'm aware of. If you can, um, if that's not what you're talking about, if it's something specific, definitely let me know. I'm just, I'm not sure I understand what you mean by Google folders. All right, let me jump back to my dashboard here really quick, guys. We probably got about five or six more minutes left maybe seven if I can squeeze it in there. So uh, if you got any last minute questions, if you guys haven't asked, asked a question let it, yet, it doesn't have to be on topic. Um, definitely just throw a question out there in the chat and, and I will do my best to get that answered for you today. Um, like I said, if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel because we do these live to, live streams every week, every Thursday, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern time, 11 a.m. Pacific. And then uh, also... Um, also, we do video tutorials each week on Wednesday. All right, let me grab an email question really quick here. Uh, let's see. I shoot events for several schools throughout the year. Is there an easier way to get the photos to the school and the parents without sending an email invite out each time? So if you are shooting for a specific school and you want uh, baby, maybe you want everything, I said baby, excuse me. Maybe you want everything to be accessible through one link and you don't wanna to have to keep emailing the school uh, a link or emailing this specific, this new uh, game that you shot. Maybe you don't wanna email the links out all the time. You just want everybody to go to one link and be able to access all the photos. What you could do is just create a group for the school Upload all of their galleries into that. If it's you're shooting like their games and things like that, upload all their galleries to that. You can actually just send that school that link, send it out to the parents, and then they can just keep re-accessing accessing that link, and any new gallery that you upload into that group would be there. So let's say, for instance, maybe um, under sports right here, 
maybe this is for a specific school let's just rename it really quick and let's say that um this is for uh raleigh high school all right so now any new game or event or any kind of uh anything that we go and photograph for raleigh high school what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we upload it inside of this group and what we can do is we can send them the link to this group and then they'll be able to access any new content that's in there now you can even personalize this uh, link a little bit if you click on it go down to sharing and client access you can put it in here in the gallery ID if you say Raleigh you just say Raleigh hi or something like that or you could just say Raleigh if you wanted but the important thing is notice how it's changing the link to this group so if I delete that that link is that right there f8 blah 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 that's kind of hard to remember so if we're going to be working with the same school parents over and over again and we don't want them to have to put in a new link and we want to make it something easier for them to remember and come back to time after time what you could do is just put a name in here and then um, that changes the link to the gallery and now blackonyx.zenfolio.com forward slash Raleigh is a lot easier to remember to find those photos and things like that rather than just that normal link all right let me get out of this really quick get back to the dashboard Ted says, you gave me a link to Google folders. Oh, I do remember that, Ted. So we were talking about, I think we were talking about a way, if I'm not mistaken, either a way to let people upload. I can't remember exactly what we were talking about, Ted. I know it's not something that's integrated. I was just saying that I think it might be something that will work for that specific task that you were looking at doing. Um, I don't know if there's any plans for any, integra any integration of that at this time. But um, it was definitely just a personal suggestion to try to accomplish um, what we were working on while we were talking about that. So I do apologize if I uh, confused you there. All right, let me grab another email question really quick. Quick, I can't talk. I'm running out of ability to talk. Sorry, guys. Um, let's see. So the next question I got here says, how do I collect my funds from you guys? So... That depends on how you're selling your photos. If you're selling self-fulfilled, that means that you're going to have to decide how you want to collect your funds, and it's actually going to be outside of Zenf Zenfolio. Now, I don't really have time to run through the whole process of self-fulfilled. Basically, this is an option that we offer where you can offer prints, products, whatever you want to sell using any vendor that you want that's not integrated into Zenfolio. Now, you have to go and you have to create self-fulfilled products. You have to establish how you want to collect payment. Um, there's actually a really good tutorial on that on the YouTube channel. But the first thing you'll have to do is you'll have to establish how you want to collect payments. So if you go to setting right here, you can go down to selling. And then there is this option right here that says collecting payments. Now again, this is only for self-fulfilled products. If you're selling vendor products that are integrated through Zenfolio, this does not apply. Um, so this is for self-fulfilled products. You can choose to collect payment directly. You can choose PayPal and you can put in a PayPal email address here. Or you can use a merchant account like Authorize.net or PayPal Payments Pro. Put that stuff in here and then the payments will be made through that. And you would either need to go through PayPal or that merchant account to actually collect the funds. Now, if you're using the integrated labs like MPIX, MPIX Pro, IYP, uh, Zenfolio USA, things like that, those are going to be processed through Zenfolio's credit card processor. And you actually have to request a payout for those funds. And the way you do that is you just click on selling right here. Click on reports and payouts over on the left. And then you can click request payout right here. And then you can do a payout through PayPal or you can do it through direct deposit to your bank. Now I definitely recommend using a uh, direct deposit uh, rather than PayPal just because I find it's easier, but you can definitely use PayPal if you want. So you would come right here and put in your PayPal email address right here, or you can go down here and uh, choose the payment by ACH direct deposit right here like this. Put in your bank account information and things like that. Put in the amount that you want to be paid. It will tell you your available balance over here. You'd put the amount that you want and then hit 
uh, continue. And what and that's going to process that. And usually it takes like one to five business days for that payment to actually be deposited. But that's how you get the payout there. All right, let me get back to my dashboard. And unfortunately, guys, we are out of time. I want to say thank you to everybody for coming and hanging out with us. I hope that this was helpful and informative. Um, and if you guys have any questions, those of you guys who are watching the recorded version of this, if you have any questions that you want me to answer next week, definitely leave them as a comment in the video below. And then I hope to see everybody here same time, same place next week. And until then, I hope you all have a great and wonderful weekend.